Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday, July 19th. I'm John Weigel here with Juliet Bennett Ryla, and you're listening to The Hustle Daily Show. According to a recent survey from Kick Resume, 85% of employees have dealt with an annoying coworker. The annoying behavior in question can range from micromanagement to taking credit for work that's not theirs. Many of us have been irritated by a coworker before, but why is it so widespread right now and does it translate to remote work too? We'll chat about that in a bit, but first let's give you the hits and headlines today in business and tech. Starting us off, Ford Motors is investing $3 billion to expand production of its Super Duty trucks. The company will use a Canadian plant previously set to become an EV hub and will add a capacity of about 100,000 pickup trucks per year. Next, speaking about cars, Starbucks will get EV charging stations, courtesy of Mercedes-Benz, ooh fancy, at 100 U.S. locations. They can bump compatible EVs to 80% in about 30 minutes. Next up, Apex, the largest, most complete Stegosaurus fossil ever discovered, just sold to billionaire Ken Griffin for $44.6 million at an auction this week. He plans to lend it to a U.S. museum. Across the pond, Britain is the first nation in Europe to greenlight the sale of lab-grown meat in pet food with approval of British company Meatly. And lastly, OpenAI launched GPT-4 Mini, a smaller model that will replace GPT-3.5 Turbo in ChatGPT. It's available now for free users, and if you subscribe now, you'll get more naming conventions for your next ChatGPT. Okay, so if you're finding some of your coworkers are insufferable lately, you're not alone by a long shot. Today, we're going to talk about why exactly a lot of us are really annoyed. But first, Juliet, where is this information coming from? This is coming from a recent survey from resume platform Kick Resume that surveyed 3,000 employees, finding that 85% of them had said they dealt with an annoying coworker. 58% of those people reported reduced productivity as a result. And when you look at a number like 85%, that means we're actually, I mean, I think we're just annoying each other. (laughs) It can't all be one guy. That's right. (laughs) I think we're annoying each other. Yeah. And if you're not annoyed by anybody, you might be the annoying one, I guess, is what we're we're thinking about here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's a big number. That does indicate that a lot of people are annoyed at work. Fascinating, though, because I feel like you can get annoyed at a lot of things at work and maybe they don't always fall on a person specifically, but... What do these annoying coworkers do or what is specified on how these people are annoyed? So there are the top five things. And I found this actually really surprising, which we can get into what the top five things were. Number one, 33% said someone who stole the credit for their or another person's work. I feel like this is not that surprising. We hear about that a lot. Sure. 32% micromanaging, not surprising. 30% frequent complaining. This is me. This is what I do at work. I am this person. <laughs> Sorry in advance. That's me. 30% invading personal space. 27%. There are two things that surprised me. One was that on this list, it was not the person that like kind of loafs and slacks off. And then Uh you got to pick up that. That's the most annoying person to me is like, you got to pick up somebody else's slack because you know, they're not doing it. Right. I was surprised that that was not on this top five. I was also surprised by the fifth most common problem which was 27% of people who I presume are adults who are not the hamburglar are stealing lunches. Yeah. It's 27% of people cite lunch theft. Yes. That's insane. (laughs) It's just next level insanity. I mean, the way to steal lunches at work, I mean, if I were to do it, right, I'm not saying I do, but if I were (laughs) to do it, it would be very easy, right? You have the fridge there, all these lunches in there, all these beautiful lunches that people took time to make or buy. And you could just take one, pop it right in the microwave. I get it. I get how easy it is. I can't believe that that amount of people are angry with those that have done it or have that experience before. Have you ever gotten your lunch stolen before? Uh, I don't think so. But I'm not a great person to ask because I have worked in media since um, the recession. So the amount of offices I have actually been in is pretty small. And most of the co-working spaces that I have worked out on, the fridge is like within direct eyesight of everyone sitting there. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lunch thief would be quickly apprehended. Yeah. The only office that I have ever spent a considerable amount of time in, they actually catered lunch for us to force us to be at our desks during lunch. 
this sounds cooler than it was because by catered, I mean, they're like, here's a hundred hard shell tacos from Taco Bell. Now keep working. (laughs) So I haven't experienced it ever, but just the gall, like the audacity of opening up a fridge and taking something that is not yours and eating it. I mean, I guess I had a roommate that did this once, but like, it just seems so juvenile. Sure. I mean, I have so many questions. Like, what do you do with the Tupperware afterwards? Do you throw out yeah. the Tupperware? Do you clean it and leave it for the person? Like, how does, how does yes. that work? I mean, I guess I have to ask the right people. I got to interview a lunch thief on here someday. Mm-hmm. But these issues, it seems like a lot of them aren't necessarily a problem for remote workers like you and I. Like, right. I can't take your lunch, Juliet, although I'm sure it is a very nice stew that you've made. Uh, yeah, well, it's summer, so it's not so much stews. I've been baking a lot of chicken thighs. I did notice someone did steal the bone of the chicken thigh out of the trash and put it in the living room today. However, that was a cat. Hmm. The biggest lunch theft of all. I expect this behavior from a cat. (laughs) But uh, yeah, it's true that a lot of these problems go away when you're talking about remote work. Lunch theft. If someone is stealing your lunch out of your apartment and you live alone, you're in a horror movie. (laughs) Invading personal space. That's very hard to do over Slack. I mean, someone can send you incessant messages, but they can't hover over your desk. And I also just think a lot of the things that like would irk you if they were happening all day long. You have a breather when you're by yourself in your house where you're kind of just like you can kind of chill. Things aren't escalating. So a lot of that is going away. But another interesting statistic here from this report is that Gen Z respondents, 33 percent of them said remote work had actually increased irritating behaviors. And that could be because a lot of them, especially the younger ones, came into their careers during the pandemic. So they actually haven't really spent that much time in the office. And so a lot of, you know, the stuff that they are irritated by is stuff that originated on Zoom or other sort of remote work platforms. Yeah, true. That makes some sense. Even if you didn't start your career over Zoom, that one may get tired of the uh, corporate Zoom (laughs) etiquette of uh, daily Zoom meetings. Uh, That's completely understandable. But, uh, you know, going from Zoom to the pandemic as well, because I feel like that's kind of a big elephant in the room we have to talk about when it comes to being annoyed at work. Right. What place does that have in this whole conversation? So there was another survey, I suppose, that I found. This one was from a company called WorkShield. It's a misconduct solutions company. I'm sure their day-to-day is very fun. Uh, They found that coworker complaints actually spiked at the onset of the pandemic and as workers returned. And the theory here from WorkShield CEO Jared Pope is that he thinks people forgot how to act (laughs) to other people. (laughs) Like we just got so (laughs) Mm -hmm. isolated uh, that we just forgot how to act. And I think... This is correct, personally, and I would be curious to know what our readers think and what other people have experienced, because I feel like just leaving the house and doing anything is vastly different than it was before. Like, I remember going to the movies and it was very much you sit in your seat and you open all your stuff as soon as you get there and you don't have your phone on and you're quiet. And now I go to the movies. I went to the movies the other day. I went to go see Long Legs and the woman like two seats down from me took her socks and shoes off and put them on the rail and like her bare feet on the rail. And people were talking and squirming around and somebody fell asleep snoring, even though this is a movie where Nicolas Cage is really scary. Somehow they fell asleep during it. And I was just like, I don't remember movies being like this. And I do think there is some weight to we forgot how to act. Like now we're just watching TV on our phones on the bus and at cafes and we don't care. We don't care if it's annoying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I completely understand that argument. I actually had a very similar experience at the US Open hmm. a few years ago and I was just there randomly for a day. And a woman next to me, similar situation, just took off her socks and shoes and decided to just like bird claw her bare feet on the seat in front of her. (laughs) So, you know, I I think everybody's just kind of getting a little nuts nowadays. People listening to their phones on like max volume on the subway while they're watching TikToks, you know, these problems permeate, which I think makes a good argument for why we're, I, I guess, more annoyed in the workplace than ever. Yeah, we need some decorum back in our lives. Yeah, some order. (laughs) And, and, you know, apart from this, apart from we're all just a bunch of wild animals hanging out at Starbucks doing whatever we want now. um, Another problem, maybe it's not a problem, but it's that work friendships are fizzling out. They're they're kind of, it's harder to bond in these remote or hybrid settings. I mean, everyone that I work with here is remote. I have seen some of you never in real life. And that's different from, you know, when I would go to lunch with people or, you know, see them regularly. And so our ability to 
bond is kind of going away and we no longer have like our work bestie, our work wife, work husband, whatever terminology people used to use. Now, some people think that's a good thing because it's like we really did need that work life balance. But other times it's like, okay, well, who do you complain to? Nobody. Mm -hmm. You Mm -hmm. know, you don't have like the happy hour post work vent session where you kind of get out all of your, your work anxieties and annoyances and then you feel better no they just fester inside of you until you blow up at someone or you make an official complaint because you don't you don't have a buddy yeah well i mean i guess the last thing to talk about here though is if you do feel annoyed by a coworker asking for anybody but me Mm -hmm. um i think you're great um (laughs) what should you do in that situation Well, in obvious cases of harassment, you should report that to a supervisor. But if you're just kind of annoyed, maybe don't try to pull a little finger and scheme and manipulate to get them fired. That's going to take a lot of your energy. And don't bottle it up. That's also going to take a lot of your energy. What experts suggest is consider looking within, examining your own emotions and responses and being like, is this a reasonable way to feel? Do I maybe need to, I don't know, do some yoga, uh, do some breathing exercises? And if that doesn't work, if someone is legitimately doing something really annoying, like slacking off, stealing your lunch, invading your personal space, any of those things we mentioned, this is kind of a a fun experiment, I think. Don't be mad at that. Don't confront them with anger, but with curiosity and empathy, which I can only imagine is just wondering why you ate my lunch. Is it perhaps that you love pad thai and you can't (laughs) get it in your own neighborhood? Is there a way that we could? I don't know how that conversation would go down, but... Apparently, that is a really great way to lessen the anger that you feel and also work things out with someone in a way that is not hostile. Makes sense. Like, hey, I just want to know where my Tupperware is. Yeah. Can you please return it? My grandmother gave it to me. It's very special to me. And that's the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at thehustle.co slash email and have a great weekend.